So let's uh, open Lumerical FDTD. Uh, so uh, if I open a solar cell example with Lumerical FDT, okay, you can see this is a lumerical FDTD, and uh, uh, so let's start with uh, just waveguide. So, uh, so <clears throat> for the lumerical FDTD, uh, you can define your structure by uh, these items. So, as you see. You can put triangular, rectangular, and other waveguides. For instance, if I put, uh, so let's disable this waveguide. So for instance, if I want to put uh, just a, a circle waveguide. So as you see here, a circle is added in uh, the window and um, you can, change the geometry, the X and Y, or radius, or the material, or other parameters here. And um, uh, so, so let's start with, uh, uh, with uh, just uh, solar cell example. So I will delete this one. So for the solar cell, we need a base. So I will enable the base. And in the base, if I right click on the base and select edit object, I can see that this is a X span, X span. So it's three micrometer in, in X direction. So as you see here, you can see four windows, X, Y view, respective view, X, Z view, and Y, Z view. So in the X, X, Y view, so this is three micrometers and and uh, you can see also by by the ruler here it's it's around three micrometers so uh, my x span is three micrometer and uh, y span is uh, 0 0.5 micrometer so as you see here it's it's around 0 0.5 micrometer so my material is uh, is uh, aluminum. So if I go to the material, so here is the material bottom. So if I select the material and if I select the uh, aluminum or aluminum in, for instance, palic, we'll turn back here and see the material is aluminum, aluminum palic. You see aluminum palic. So. In the material, if I select aluminum palic, and if I go to the go to the material explorer, and if I put plot in new window, you see here for the wavelengths of 0.3 to 1.5, 1.1 micrometer. So if I select, I need index, and I click plot in new window. You see here. For instance, this is a refractive index, and this is the imaginary part of the aluminum. So as you see here in this picture, it's a wavelength around 0.8. We have a maximum refractive index. So uh, uh, we define the geometry. We, we can change the name here. For instance, it's a base. This is a geometry and this is a material, and that's good. That's enough for our case. So then uh, I will select enable silicon. So for the silicon, you see here the, the X is the same as base, but the Y is, is larger. And see Y is uh, around three micrometer, so X is same, 
and the vibe is three micrometer. And the material is silicon pallet copy one. If I go to the material, select uh, silicon copy one, and then go to the material explorer, and select silicon copy one, and then uh, for the this wavelength range, 0.3 to 1.1. If I plot a new window, you see that the refractive index versus wavelengths for silicon, the imaginary part for the refractive index, uh, imaginary part of silicon based on versus wavelengths you see here. So these are our materials. And then I select anti-reflection loading material, so AR. If I go to the geometry, the same uh, X span, but the Y span is around 70 nanometer. So, and the material is a, is a refractive index of the material is constant, it's around 2.05. So, uh, now we define our our structure. So the next step is uh, we must select our uh, solver. So <coughs> or our our solver is FTTD. If I right click on the solver and click Edit Object, <coughs> so uh, in this simulation. Uh, we are simulating just 2D simulation and the temperature and simulation time you can see here we put it and for the background I put background as one that if somewhere that we, we don't define our material so the default <coughs> default material is, is one so regarding to the geometry just uh, uh, I simulate uh, 0.5 micrometer in X and five micrometer in, in the Y. So in the Y, uh, we must use a PML, perfect mesh layer, but for the X, it's a periodic. It means that this structure repeated in, in this direction or in this direction. So, so in the mesh setting, uh, we select auto non uniform and conformal variant zero because it's a metal. So in the in the boundary condition, as I said, <coughs> for the X case, it's minimum boundary condition is periodic, but for the Y mean and Y max is a PML. So you see here, we, PML is means that you can absorb the light uh, with some light here. So. <clears throat> Sorry, and uh, yeah, and uh, this parameter also is important. It's more like this one e minus five for other shadow. I think it's enough for this simulation. So, so now our solver is selected. So next, we select our source. As I said, because we are working uh, for solar. So solar is uh, like kind of like a plane wave, and then we can include in uh, AM one point five that I described in in the my presentation. So uh, we use a plane wave, and uh, as I said, because uh, in the x direction our structure is periodic, so we use a, a plane wave a block periodic, and if uh, uh, you know our plane wave is is it's some degree, so at that case we use a be a be fast. But now, a block and periodic is enough. So and the injection is in the y direction. This is a y direction, and this is a backward. So if for instance, if I select forward, you see here that the the light goes up. So for this reason, I select backward. And um, uh, for the for the range of frequency is 0.3 to 1.1 is uh, 
now for our case. So that's it. So now, uh, uh, next we need some monitor. So uh, for the monitor, we, we need a T is a transmission monitor. So if I go to the transmission monitor, so I want to simulate type of all. And uh, so the so wavelength range. And the, for the geometry, just my monitor is a lin linear monitor, linear X. So, and I want to record these data. And uh, that's it. So uh, we, we predict that the, the T value is zero because the blue geometry that you see is the base, is a metal, so, and uh, we, we cannot see any light after metal. But this isn't T is zero. And this is a reflection of the reflection monitor. And uh, same uh, thing, and the, but, but a different place, it's a copy. So this monitor is a copy of this monitor. So now, because uh, as I mentioned, um, so Lumerical gives us a tools uh, analysis group names uh, solar generation. In the solar generation, you can you can bring the solar generation from here. So if you go to the analysis, select. Solar, you see that the solar generation right here. So you can bring it into the simulation. So, um, so in the solar, uh, we can uh, calculate uh, uh, generation rate that I described in. Uh, my presentation. So this is a uh, G export and the Q export. So this is for the thermal and also we can calculate absorption thermal, door circuit, generation and these parameters. So if, uh, if I come back to this folder, you see here, we didn't see any uh, file output for instance, G and Q. And if we run the simulation, so now the simulation is ready for run. Uh, so let's start to run the simulation. The run, so select run. Uh, so, you know, uh, as you see here, this is an auto shut off level. And this level, if uh, you know, it decreases, decreases, and if uh, reach to the value that we put in the auto shut off parameter in the FTDT part, so our simulation will finish. So, uh, so after we finish the simulation, uh, we can see the uh, we can right click on the solar generation and select run analysis. So you see here. Our analysis is finished, so I can go to the visualize and, for instance, see the. Uh, before I go to the uh, visualize, I can select edit object, and if I go to the script and run the analysis, I want to see that. Uh, show you what is the analysis script output. You can see here, our short circuit is 
28.3699 milliampere per centimeter square. So, and also you can see the maximum generation rate and, uh, and other parameters. So, um, regarding to the these values also, um, variable, uh, you see here, we select for the period that the 18, so it's uh, 18. Uh, because uh, our uh, width is uh, 0.5 micrometer, and if we multiply 18 to 0.5 micrometers, it's around 9 micrometer. That is the length of our, our uh, device. So uh, if I come back and see the visualize, for instance, G export. We click the edit and select the log scale. You see here, this is the generation. So the generation rate on the top of the surface is larger than the bottom. And uh, so also we can see the uh, Uh, peer absorption, for instance, thermal. See here also thermal in the top, in the top of the surface is larger than them. And also there is environment in numerical FDTD that you can open a script language that uh, I want to uh, plot the transmission, absorption, and reflection. So you can see here in this line that, so get data from T, F from T, so this monitor. So R is I calculated by these equations and so, so we have, we can see F here. The first item is wavelength. The second is reflection. The second, then the transmission. And this is absorption. So if I run this simulation, if I run this script, I, I can see a plot that, uh, show me a transmission, reflection, and absorption. So you can see here, the transmission is zero, and this is absorption, and this is a reflection. So, so if I go back to the folder, I can see that now there is two that file, mat file added in my folder. So I use this uh, data file in the numerical heat, and this one is numerical charge. So yeah, let's continue and go to the numerical charge. <laughs> 